Good morning and welcome to this show. You know, we're going to take you through a, you know, fantastic journey where we're going to discuss around, you know, how prepared are you when it comes to ransomware? Uh, I'm Magnus Jensen. I work for a company called Arrow and we have some brilliant experts alongside of me here, Boyan and Alexander. So do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Magnus. Uh, my name is Boyan. I'm a senior account executive here at Haiku and um, Looking forward to this uh, webinar. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Alexander, and I'm a system engineer. So basically, I'm here for technical part. Thank you. Alexander is so modest. You know, he's the smart guy around all of us. You know, um, just two, two, two slides around Arrow. So we are, you know, we are a company. We're a global distributor. We have a Swedish branch. In the Swedish branch, we have a hundred people. These hundred people, they can help you with all of your challenges that relates to the data center. Um, so don't hesitate to, to uh, connect with any one of us to get more clarity of that. You know, our product mix is you know, sort of sitting in the data center. So we operate all of the greater, bigger, you know, infrastructure players. And we also have the best data protection softwares like HiQ. Um, I'm going to start this show to give you, you know, short insight on what is happening in the in the Swedish and the European market. Uh, so the first slide is all about, you know, what are the technologies that people are looking to involve in their projects going into 2021. So clearly, you see that um, this whole story around, you know, moving workloads up into the cloud and moving workloads that, you know, it's not important for people and companies to have on site, they're transforming them into the cloud. That's why you see the cloud storage is sort of one of the, the largest, um, you know, uptakes when it, you compare, you know, at the same period last year. The second thing that we clearly see is that a lot of people are, you know, speeding up their existing boxes. So they are, they're adding flash drives instead. So both for, for their storage, but also for their NASes. And the third one is that they really want to offload a lot of their um, object store. So they want to move data out of their um, system into a cheaper storing device. So that's what you clearly see. So, so what does that mean for us, you know, that are in sort of the data protection space? Uh, so what are the features around storage and, and data protection that people are investigating and, and moving into in 2021? And I think, you know, through the course of 2022 as well. So clearly here we see the top ones being, you know, archived to the cloud. So I want my data not to sit in my, my, my premises. I want to move it into the cloud and, you know, add some metadata and add some data protection to it. The second one that we clearly see, which is has sort of the most massive uptake, is, is backup to the cloud. And, and, you know, this is sort of why we speak with brilliant data protection vendors like, like HiQ, because their solution is there and, and, you know, can really help you guys move, make that move, that transition. So what are we seeing, you know, locally here at, at, at the Swedish market? And, you know, what are the key concerns and what are peop on people's mind? So the first one, you know, I couldn't say it, it's ransomware. Everybody talks about ransomware. That's the new buzzword in town. Um, so what does ransomware mean? You know, they talk about immutable file systems. They add a lot of these um, topics, but, but it's all around that. And, and all the vendors that are traditional vendors are suddenly ransomware vendors. So that's one thing that we see. The second thing we see is that, you know, a lot of people are looking at backup as a service and they are building out their backup as a service capability. And then, you know, I think we have the third element, which is hybrid or multi-cloud. Um, so as, as part of your strategy, you're, you're investing in sort of a solution to handle your hybrid and multi-cloud environment. So these are, you know, the technology trends when it comes to data protection that we see in the Swedish market. With that, I would like to hand over to to Boyan to take you through the high cube bit. Magnus, thanks a lot for this kind introduction. Hope you can hear me. Uh, so yeah, thanks for this kind introduction and yeah, really nice market technology trends overview. Um, let's not talk about how Haiku can contribute to, um, to the ransomware protection topic, right? Um, I will start with a question. Do you know 
how ready you are for a ransomware attack. Or maybe if I just rephrase it, what are the things you are doing today to prevent and to, let's say recover in the event of uh, such attack? Um, at Haiku, we are calling it R score, right? So R score um, is a unique initiative and a kind of assessment tool that scores an organizational ransomware recovery readiness. And this actually opens a very important security topic uh, these days. Uh, so today we'll address it with how to overcome any gaps in, uh, in your current data protection strategy. And of course, be more prepared for this kind of um, vulnerability. Um, in the first part, I will make an overview of how Haiku can help you with uh, awareness around the ransomware recovery readiness. And after that, Alexander will demonstrate some crucial points uh, on our life environment. Okay, but before I start uh, with the R score topic, let me just spend a couple of words about the Haiku uh, as a company and our solutions portfolio. At Haiku, we are fully focused on the data protection. So with uh, years of experience, we are not just another backup vendor on the market, but we are here to provide you really a purpose-built and fully native data protection uh, for your cloud environment, no matter if this is you know, on-prem, so um, in your private, or let's say, enterprise cloud, or even in a public cloud. Uh, we are providing a multi-cloud solution where you are able natively protect on one side your uh, Nutanix or VMware infrastructure on-prem, what you can see on this slide, of course, along with the bare metals. So if you have any uh, physical service on-prem and on the other side, your public cloud infrastructure. And uh, <clears throat> what means we are a native solution? Simply, we won't build additional backup silo in your environment because we are fully leveraging the platform. This means that Haiku uh, on-prem represents just a small VM running on your cluster um, and uh, in a public cloud, our solution is implemented as fully data protection as a service, which uh, literally means that you can start using it with just a couple of clicks, right? You just subscribe it, uh, subscribe on it once you are already logged in with your um, existing account. Um, in each case, we're using platform APIs to implement the data protection. And this is actually the way how we can keep everything native, simple, and hold your costs um, related to the data protection really on the minimum. Uh, and at the end, when you connect uh, with Haiku, your private and a public cloud, you get actually the real beauty of the solution because then you are able to protect your data on-prem in a cloud, move your uh, work clouds from one platform to another, uh, setting up the cheapest possible disaster recovery scenario with the public cloud, right? Because you pay just for the storage in the cloud, uh, our hive to cloud, etc. right? So a very lightweight multi-cloud software solution. And believe me, today we are helping a lot of customers in, their, in this uh, era of transition uh, between the, the platforms, especially to the public cloud, where customers can simply use Haiku to move everything to the public cloud and then just use further on Haiku uh, to, to back up their data in the cloud. Okay, um, and uh, of course, let's now move to, uh, to the, um, uh, the biggest question, right? What's your ransomware recovery readiness score? And um, when we are talking about the ransomware, you should know that every single business vertical is under treat. There are no exceptions, basically no exceptions. And depending on the frequency of the attacks nowadays, it's uh, not just a question if you will be attacked, but when you will be attacked, right? So not sure if you're aware, but ransomware attack happens every 11 seconds. So it's extremely worrying situation. And uh, believe me, we are daily working with the customers who had the ransomware experience. Some of them have even paid more than once to get their data back. And they are more than aware that, uh, so what, this means actually. And uh, I would say the only important thing at this point is the question, how are you prepared? What is your so-called R score? Uh, the score which, as I mentioned, defines uh, your recovery readiness. 
And uh, on this question, you will be actually able to answer yourself only with considering the factors affecting the R score. Uh, the most important factors you can find on this slide. Uh, first and foremost, do you have the right backup frequency, compliant with your business and compliant, of course, with the 4321 standard? Then you should ask yourself, how are you taking care for the production or let's say protection of the uh, backups and how your backup storages are accessible from other locations and sources? Right? Um, when we are talking about the backup solution as such, how safe is it actually? So this is a very important factor as, you know, backup solution could be an extremely weak point. With a bad solution, you not only expose the data, but also the backups, right? which is even worse. Uh, <clears throat> moving on, here is also the security of the backup network and how do you have a control over your backups? How do you monitor them? And last but not least, you should be sure that you will be able to recover fast if anything happens. This is really crucial to not affect your business. Right? And now, how Haiku, uh, how, uh, Haiku can help you address these crucial security factors. Um, I will just slightly touch our approach and uh, later will Alexander put some more uh, light on them. Addressing the first mentioned point, uh, with the right backup strategy. So Haiku will take care for the backup in the right way. Further on, by making sure your backup immutability, right? so very important factor, um, with isolating the access to the backups, which uh, we are achieving with our uh, multi-tenancy approach. Here is another important thing to provide you a black box type of a backup solution, which is basic, which basically locks any access to the back doors. Uh, then with protecting the backup paths with uh, the network and notify you around any unusual behavior. And of course, last but not least, when you need your data back to provide you really uh, a fast and reliable recovery, uh, of course, thanks to our intelligent and uh, native platform integration. So I think, um, we have covered the most crucial things around the ransom recovery readiness. And uh, please feel free to visit the getrscore.org to find out uh, your ransom recovery readiness score and, of course, our recommendation around it. And believe me, in what it won't cost you anything. Right? Believe me, I'm a sales guy. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. So really, really uh, no costs around it. Uh, and last but not least, let me also encourage you to simply put your hands uh, on the solution. Uh, let, you know, let's not just talk about it, how fancy it is, uh, but please feel free to download it and test it and, you know, make sure this is the case. Uh, you will also have our support uh, when you will start the evaluation period uh, from our system engineer. And uh, during the ovulation period, right, we will assist you so that everything with, uh, will uh, go really smoothly. So most welcome to, uh, to try it. And uh, this is it uh, from my side. Thanks for your attention. And let me pass my word to Alexander to put a hands on the product and show you how actually it looks in, uh, in action. So Alexander, please. Uh, thank you, Brian. So let me share my screen. So basically, let me show you how you can actually enhance recovery with Haiku. So I divided this demo basically in three segments. Uh, first one is secure backup infra infrastructure. Uh, second one is protecting your backup. And third one is a sure uh, rapid recovery. So Boyan already mentioned that Haiku is soft and only solution with just virtual machine running inside your, let's say, uh, Nutanix or VMware box. And basically you can deploy us uh, from image. So you literally need three minutes uh, for the deployment. But uh, we are actually using hardened CentOS Linux. So that means basically it's a black, black box. Uh, we have hardened uh, CentOS Linux, always focused on security and latest patches. And basically that means also that you don't need additional hardware for a high controller. You don't need OS license uh, for it and it's very much secured and we can also disable ssh access to it so basically it will be very secure 
And you should always use, let's say for the public cloud, you, sh you should always use backup as a service solution. So basically we also have, we can offer you uh, backup as a service or data protection as a service for Google cloud and also for the Azure. So this is a fully as a service. We will deploy high controller for you. We will also upgrade and maintain high controller for you. And we always have a very good integration with the platform. Uh, for the public cloud and for the on-prem environment. And as I said, you should always try to keep, let's say <clears throat> you should have secure integration with any platform. As I said, uh, and Boyan also mentioned that we are all, always leveraging APIs and we are always using uh, the platform. And the last one is keep track on of unusual activity. And basically with HiQ, we have very good events when you can just enable notifications and we will instantly notify you using emails or webhooks. And basically we are also following a uh, change rate. So if we notice abnormal change rate of your virtual machines, since we are also following change rate, we will instantly send you notification. And in that case, what you need to do, you basically need to go to power options and suspend cleanup. So this is very important because in event, let's say in case of a ransomware attack, you should always keep more restore points as possible. So you basically you need to find a restore point that isn't encrypted. So <clears throat> also let's say protecting your backup. Regarding protection of your backup, you should always try to keep or to use warm immutable backups. And here you can actually see that if you want to add target to Haiku. Basically, we support any kind of storage. So NFS, SMB, iSCSI targets. And cloud is also fully supported like AWS, SG, and Azure and Google Cloud. But here we also have Nutanix objects. And basically, this is perfect ransomware protection because if you enable uh, object lock on Nutanix objects, nobody will actually be able to change your backup data. So your backup backup data will be secured and you will you will have uh, restore points uh, that you can recover from and also best recommendation is to uh, have let's say a backup segmentation so you should always secure your backup infrastructure you should isolate your backup data and basically best recommendation is to expose uh, backup targets only to high queue. So basically, if you expose it also to, let's say, to your, your users, in that case, if ransomware actually cracks the username and password, uh, your backup data will be also exposed uh, to ransomware attack. And basically, you, you will not have any uh, restore point. Uh, with high queue, you can also disable uh, backup deletation. So basically, sometimes you also need to protect yourself uh, from within of your organization. And although we do have this expire, so basically we can expire uh, backup and snapshots, but we can also disable this button. And basically that means that nobody can actually expire or delete your uh, restore points. And also you should take care of detail access control. And also with HiQ, we have self-service with multi-tenants. That means that you can create additional tenants, additional groups, and also additional users. And basically, password will be encrypted in our uh, database. But now, if you want to add user to the group, we have role-based approach. So from the just viewer to full administrator. And this could be important because let's say if you have DevOps team and DB admins team and so on, so you can just select which machines that belong to them and basically you can go to ownership and you can assign ownership to uh, that group of virtual machines. So all those users will have access only to uh, virtual machines that belong to them. So let me just show you how this looks. If you switch the group, so I'm an administrator, I'm also part of the DevOps group. Basically now I can see what they can see and I cannot see anything else. So this is a security feature also dashboard is a bit different because now I'm limited and also I cannot see targets. So basically it's not my job to, to mess with the targets. And also let me just show you uh, third segment is assure rapid re recovery. So we are policy based uh, backup software 
And basically, you can create policies according to your uh, business needs. And with HiQ, you can actually have, instead of three to one backup strategy or backup rule, you can have a four to one. So you, that means that you can have backup, you can have copy of your backup, let's say, in a different, different storage, different location. Also, you can have archive, maybe you can store archive in a cloud. And basically, we have also fast restore. So with fast restore option enabled, basically, we can keep uh, Nutanix storage layer snapshots for the longer period. So let's say if I'm performing daily backups, I can also change, let's say I can keep those snapshots for the couple of days. Basically, as soon as you notice that something is wrong, you will need to restore. And restoring directly from Nutanix storage layer snapshots, this is the fastest possible way for the restore. And then if I go to virtual machines, you can actually see that for this virtual machine, we have snapshot for several days. So that means that I can have instant recovery directly from snapshot. So I will need just a couple of minutes to restore a virtual machine. But also uh, you should always take care of uh, if that you have efficient recovery from remote targets. And here we can also help you because in the policies we have RPO and RTO. So that means that let's say RPO is how often we would like to have backups. But recovery within or RTO is how much time you have to restore your data if it is lost. And again, as I said, we can help you with this because we have RTO assurance. That means that we can actually estimate how much time you have to, re to recover your virtual machines. For each virtual machine, we will give you some estimates. And we always have uh, uh, statistics for the last two, uh, uh, two weeks, basically. Uh, we are using each backup and each restore to collect statistics and we can provide you with pretty accurate uh, data how much time you will need and also you should always take care that you have flexible recovery option at any time so that means that uh, you should have multi-use recovery options uh, of the same backups and basically with HiQ, we can give you from same restore point you, you can have full VM restore, let me just show you. So you can have full VM restore, you can restore VDisks, you can restore databases with HiQ, but you can also recover files and folders. Very simple with HiQ. And you should always uh, try to have, let's say, recover into public cloud. And again, with HiQ, you can actually use uh, public cloud as a disaster recovery site. And basically this is cheapest uh, recovery site, disaster recovery site, because you only need to pay storage in advance. So you need to keep copy of your data or even primary backup in the cloud. And if disaster actually happens, you can just spin up your virtual machines in the cloud. So currently you can spin it up to Google Cloud or Azure, but AWS is coming very soon. And you can also bring virtual machines from public cloud to your on-prem. So again, we can just spin virtual machines from cloud. Again, Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS is coming. And basically, this is all from my side. So, Boyan, would you like to add something, Magnus? No, but I, I think you're helping people even out the score towards, you know, if an attack would happen, because it's always an uneven score, because if someone finds a vulnerability, everybody gets access to vulnerability. And the persons, you know, that is protecting the environment, they need to be, you know, perfect at all points of time. So in order to make this a more an even playing field uh, with the hackers, I think you need smarter, easier, simpler tool like this in order to, to um, do that. And there is also something stupid that I heard in the market is that people are stupid, I wouldn't say, but, but it's different. Um, you know, people are paying insurances for, for paying the fee for ransomware. It's better to have a solution like yours and invest that kind of money in your solution rather than you know paying an insurance for for it so that would be my recommendation absolutely it's much cheaper you know to to invest into into this than waiting and then pay for the for the uh, you know this ransom it's uh, yeah but we had a, a couple of cases with the customers and yeah believe me it's not it's not nice. <laughs> no, but, but it's like an uneven playing field because, you know, if, if I'm, let's say, if I play in the red team, which is sort of the hacker team, and you play in the blue team, 
I can download things on GitHub and, you know, spin it up. And, you know, I just need to be right once, you know, and then I can launch massive attacks, correct? But you're playing in the blue team. You need to protect the environment and you need to be on top of your game and the best in class every single day. So, so it's an uneven playing field, you know, it's. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Should we try to, you know, thank you guys, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I think the most important one was Alexander's, you know, glance through throughout, you know, the HiQ data protection system, uh, super cool tool um, and easy to deploy and easy to get going, you know. Love to, if you have any questions, you can ping me or, you know, I guess Boyan as well. Uh, and we'd love to, to answer all of that. And if you want to try it, it's free. You know, you can just go to tryhiq.com and, and download your, your starting point. Exactly, exactly. So if you will have any, so if you will need any more information, just let us know or let uh, Magnus know. We would be glad to provide you more information, more details, um, present your solution, make more tailor-made presentation or simply help you with evaluation. As mentioned, the solution is really simple. You won't need much time to test it. And yeah, feel free to, uh, to and, put hands and on. Boyan, we have a question. So there is a question. We have someone that is asking if they can ask a question. Of course you can ask a question. OK, perfect. So what's the question? Let's check. Can we see it? Let's just type in. Yeah. Exactly, you know, the, the worst thing is sort of the silence, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Please feel free to ask. Just, yeah. uh, just type down the question and we'll try to answer. And, and also, you know, if you if you don't, you know, get hold of us now, you know, please reach out to us. We'd love to. CentOS is about to be end of life. That's the question. Yeah. I think that one is more for <laughs> this you. This is a great <laughs> question, actually. So yeah. yeah, basically, we know we are aware of that, and we are also uh, ready. And basically, we will just switch to uh, Debian Linux. And we are already using for the public cloud uh, Debian Linux, so it will not be any issue for us. Great to hear that. Yeah. So it won't be any surprise. Yeah. Uh, also, AWS cloud backup as a service. Is that something that that? Is yes, on, as, the, on as the I screen? mentioned, uh, we will have it very soon. So I believe the uh, until the end of this year or early in the Q1 next year. So we are currently working on it, and we will also very soon announce it. Yeah. And then we have a new question. So estimated restore time is that based on validation, or you know, how do you base that? Uh, basically, as I said, uh, for each backup job or each restore job, even validation, we are collecting statistics and we are using that statistics to, to give you estimates. Brilliant. You know, all the also, you guys, please feel free to ask more questions. So next one is immutable snapshots or worm targets in public cloud. Is that something you support? Uh, currently, no, but uh, it will come very soon. But you have an S3 locker on most of these public cloud vendors, correct? And that will... Yes, so currently we are supporting Worm on uh, Nutanix objects, yeah. also AWS. Yeah. And currently we are also working to, to become certified to use other S3 compatible devices like maybe Scality and Cloudian. Yeah. And definitely Azure and Google Cloud are also coming with Worm. Great. So that was a lot of questions. Alexander, you, you made your paycheck today. You know? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And maybe just to add, I forgot to mention this for the targets. We can also enable encryption of the targets. So even though that you have encryption, that encrypted data can be uh, encrypted again, let's say, in the case of ransomware. But with encryption, you will actually prevent uh, hackers to read your data or to have a data leak on, let's say, dark web. So this is also a very important point. Yeah. I think if there are no more questions, we'll, we'll sort of be honest to the time that we scheduled and, and you know your calendars. 
and until next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Magnus you. and team. Thank you.